Hey guys, I'm Adam, and today we'll be tackling the age-old question of table saw versus track saw. Uh, no, wait a minute. Track saw. Which one should you buy? Stick around. I wanted to do this video because I think this is a question that comes up for a lot of people, uh, especially if you're starting a new shop or maybe you're just starting something at your house, you wanna do this as a hobby. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be talking specifically about job site table saws. Because honestly, if your shop is big enough for a full-size cabinet saw, go with the full-size cabinet saw. I used one for 15 years professionally in my cabinet shop, and I miss it. Round number one. Yeah, let's talk about crosscut capacity. As you can see on this table saw, I've only got about 25 and a half inches of crosscut capacity. Now let's see what the track saw can do. Oh, oh, you need a sheet that's 93 inches long? Yeah, no problem. This is where the track saw excels. Table saw zero, track saw one. Round number two. Oh, it's so heavy. Why is it so heavy? Oh, why is it so heavy? So for the sake of this comparison, I'm not allowing any cheating and I consider an outfeed table cheating because that's not a tool to tool comparison. Go ahead and let me know in the comments how wrong I am. Yeah, this looks like it's gonna be totally safe. No problem. Do not try this at home. Oh, come on. Jeez, dude, eat some Wheaties. And go for a run. Uh, did I say do not try this at home? Because really you shouldn't. But I'm gonna do it anyway. So obviously if you had an outfeed table, this would be much easier and much safer. I do have an outfeed table, but I'm not gonna use it for the sake of this video. Still heavy, still heavy. Okay, so let's try that with the track saw now. So depending on which tracks you have, I have a 1900 and a 1400 track and neither one of these are long enough to rip a whole piece of four by eight plywood. The 1400 will cross cut, but the reason I went with this system, for one thing, the 1400 came with the saw and the 1900, I can combine with the 1400 to fully rip a four by eight sheet, but there's a little bit of setup time. So as you can see, that's only about a million times safer than using the table saw. But what happens if you've got a four inch wide piece of plywood and you need a two inch strip cut out of it? The track saw is not gonna help you out there because there's no room to put the track. What you can do, and what I've done several times before, is you can put another piece of wood up against it, lay the track on that, and run down it. But that's not always possible. So for those cases, that's when the table saw is your friend. Okay, so I'm gonna call this one a draw. Round number three. And here's where the table saw starts to mount its comeback. Yes, if you've gotta make a small cut or lots of small cuts, you need a table saw. The track saw simply cannot do this. I mean, you can make a small cut, but I really should have demonstrated making even smaller cuts because with the table saw, you can pretty much, pretty much? You can pretty much make as small a cut as you like. And the speed with which you can make those cuts can't be touched by the track saw. Round number four. A table saw can work really well for you if you need to make 
angled cuts, uh, especially when you need to repeat those cuts, especially when it's on a small board, and especially if you have a cross cut sled, which I am not using here. But what happens when you gotta make a bigger angled cut? Yeah. Um, hey, maybe you know a way, and maybe I'm just having a brain fart here and I'm not sure what to do, but I don't, yeah, no, not gonna work. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat here a little bit and use a speed square. And let's get us a 45 cut on this board. Yep, not gonna get a cut like that on a table saw, not on a board this big. Now, can he repeat that cut? Yes, yes, he can. Like butter. Please, sir, can I have some more? Yes, yes, you can. You can have all the angled cuts you want all day long. Oh, 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 you know what? This reminds me of that weapon that Chingach Cook used to take out Magua at the end of uh, Last of the Mohicans. He's a bad dude. He was like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, back to business. I apologize, I'm immature and I like movies. Make that cut on the table saw. It just ain't gonna happen. And the track saw's clawing back. Round number five. It might be hard to see in this video, but this edge of this board is pretty far out. Far out. Now, in this case, this is why I bought the Festool TS-75. Uh, there's lots of good track saws, but the TS-75 goes deeper, and I knew I could use it whenever I wanted to joint rough lumber. It's not really necessary on this particular board. This, this board, a smaller track saw could handle, but I just picked this out for, uh, for, for demonstrating in this video. Now, of course, you could joint boards on a job site table saw, but it would require a jig, and the track saw basically has its own built-in jig, which is the track. Check out how smooth that is. Winner, track saw. Crown number six. Coming from a cabinet background, I use dados a lot. Some people never use a dado. And of course, if you have a router, you could use your router to dado, but that's a totally different tool and it doesn't really fit in with this comparison. Daters are, daters? <laughs> daters, daters are great. Dados are great whenever you need to like do interlocking pieces for building. <gasps> yes, a cabinet. It just makes for a pretty strong joint, especially when you're doing shelves. And yep, track saw just can't do it. In your face, track saw. Oh yeah, table saw? Well, how about a plunge cut? Can you do a plunge cut? Huh? Huh? Can you? No, you can't. When I made my workbench, I used this track saw a lot to cut out for my downdraft sanding table and my router table. And it comes in really handy when you need it. Okay, now let's talk about space. Uh, no, not that kind of space. So job site saws vary in size, and this one's actually kind of on the big side, but all I have to do is step on this lock. Pull that up, and then this is ready to roll anywhere. Pretty compact, but still something to consider. What about the track saw? Of course, various track saws may have different size cases. And that's pretty much that, other than you'll also need at least one, if not two tracks. Compare this to that, and you know you can lean these up against the wall, but something else to take into consideration whenever you've got a track saw is you've got to have saw horses or a workbench or something. You probably already have those, but if you don't use them for any other purpose, it is something you have to consider that is basically part of the same space-taking upper thingamajig or bobber as your track saw. Okay, so which one should you buy? The table saw or the track saw? I started out with the track saw because of in my, you know, starting over in the garage and just having a little shop, I felt like the minimal amount of space it took up would work perfect for me. But then as I did more projects where I had to make lots of small cuts, 
I was really missing having a table saw. I actually did have an old Hitachi job site table saw, but it's really old and rickety and I felt like it was kind of dangerous. So I really didn't think anybody should use it. Uh, so I'm gonna put it up for sale. So I hope this video helps you decide and I hope this wasn't too confusing. Thanks guys for watching. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and think about subscribing so that you never miss a new video. If you have any comments about maybe what I left out or any ideas for future videos, please leave those in the comments below. So can you say bye? Oh, he's a good girl.